Welcome to the Benefits Excellence Awards 2014. Here to introduce the awards, its founder and CEO of Reward Gateway, Glenn Elliott. Woo. Hello everyone. Hi. Hi everyone and welcome to the Benefits Excellence Awards 2014. It's wonderful to see so many of you here, to see so many familiar faces, old friends and new friends that we've met in the last year. You know, the Benefits Excellence Awards, it has this bit of a theme, doesn't it, about having these amazing, amazing venues. If you were with us in 2012, you saw the very first Benefits Excellence Awards from the Tate Modern, overlooking the Thames with the most beautiful view in the world. If you were with us in 2013, we were in the stunning deconsecrated church at number one Mayfair, just behind Oxford Circus. An amazing venue, and the first time anyone's ever seen me present from a pulpit. <laughs> and here we are, in 2014 awards, in a grade one listed building, this beautiful, magical banqueting house. And I couldn't bring you all here without having just a small bit of history. See, this building was imagined by James I, and, as I said, nearly 400 years ago. James I commissioned it and had it built, and he did survive to see it built, but he didn't survive that long to really, really enjoy it. It was his son, Charles I, that really made this place his own, and he fell in love with this building, and it was absolutely, for him, a labour of love. It was Charles I who commissioned Reuben to produce these am amazing, beautiful paintings uh, on the ceiling. They were produced by Reuben in Antwerp and shipped over and then mounted on the ceiling. And they're the only example of Reuben's work of this style left intact in the whole world, which is amazing. And this, in this room, Charles I held his king's banquets. So right where you're sitting now, right there, right here, imagine this huge table and the king's banquet going on. And this balustrade around the top here was where the paupers could come and watch. <laughs> Only the very best paupers, though, because it was a very great, <laughs> prestigious thing to politely watch the king's banquet happening. And it was 150 years after the building was built, that this balcony got an internal staircase because it was built for paupers who were not allowed to use the internal stairs. They had their own staircase outside. And they came in from the outside and they looked on there at the king's banquet and then they left quietly, amazed by their king. I guess it's with some irony that Charles I's last day on earth happened in this room. He was sitting on the throne over there, in the throne area. <laughs> and he was led through the floor, across here, past all of you there, to that window. The right hand went the far window there, and he stepped out of that window and was beheaded on Whitehall to the jeering crowds. And with no less drama tonight, <laughs> but hopefully a lot more fun, we will announce the winners of the 2014 Benefits Excellence Awards. Now, you know, this room... <laughs> Thank you. This, this room is really important to Charles I, and the Benefits Excellence Awards are incredibly important to us at Reward Gateway. The Benefits Excellence Awards and Benefits Excellence Live, which is the seminar series that goes with it, that runs 36 seminars across the UK uh, every year, uh, are absolutely the bedrock, the mainstay, and the core of our entire UK marketing communications program. 80% of our effort is spent just on Benefits Excellence Live and Benefits Excellence Awards. And it's absolutely right that it should be. It's critically important for us to constantly connect with and celebrate the successes of our colleagues and clients in HR. And a huge amount of planning goes into putting these awards on, as you can imagine, uh, all through the year. But actually, one critical thing that they could not operate without would be without our independent uh, judging panel. 
So I just want to say a personal thank you to all of our judges. Now I'm going to shout them out by name because they're really important. It's Alex at Atos, Alison at Robert Hall, Alison at B&M Retail, Charlie at Otis, Grant at Linger Oak, Jane at the Rewarding Company, Janet McKenzie at B&Q, Jill at Impelham, Justin at Guide Dogs for the Blind Association, Karen at Discovery Communications, Ken at Cordon Group, Lawrence at YHA, Leonie at QuickFit, Lindsay at Admiral, Louise at Bromford Group, Michelle at Admiral, Mark Strong at Leonard Chester Disability, Noel at Savills, Paul at Westfield Health. And great suspense for Pete <laughs> at Johnson Mathy, Raphael at Birmingham City Council, Sue at Sanctuary Housing, and Tori at IPSL. So could we please just have a short round of applause for all of our judges? I think many people uh, know, if you're involved in the awards, that I don't get to see the winners until you get to see the winners, which is a source of great relief for, for me, because as I meet people through the year, uh, I haven't got to give them a certain look or tell them how much to spend on the dress or anything like that. I genuinely don't get to see the winners until you do. But I do get to see the entries uh, during the process, which is great. And you know, when I, when I look at the entries and I get to read uh, many of them, uh, what I see as the entries de have developed over the last three years is a tremendous amount of innovation. Innovation in our marketplace, innovation in HR as, a, as an industry itself, and innovation in all of your organizations and companies, uh, which is in incredible. Innovation, innovation is absolutely key to us at Reward Gateway. It's absolutely core to our business, and it's absolutely in our DNA. And it reminds me um, of this quote, one of my favorite quotes about innovation. It's Leonard's sweet quote. And we used this at our wellbeing conference that we had um, back in July. The future is not something we enter. The future is something that we create. And I think it's really important because innovation doesn't happen by itself. Innovation happens because somebody takes a risk. Somebody decides they want tomorrow to be better than today, and they're going to stick their head up, buy a new program, implement a new service, change how they do things in their organization, implement a new reward, reward program, change things, they're going to stick their head up. And for them to do that, they know that it might not work. And if it doesn't work, everyone's going to look at them and say, you put that thing in place and it wasn't very good. Innovation requires people who are courageous and who understand risk and accept that failure is an inevitable, inevitable thing which you have to have to innovate. So it's really important to, to us to understand that and for everyone in our, in our, in our, to see that in our clients as well. And because that's so important, we're going to launch something special and new tonight. Because this is the Benefits Excellence Awards. But as well as the Benefits Excellence Awards, we're announcing today that we're starting a three-year quest, a quest to find the world's most innovative 100 HR people. The three-year quest to find the most innovative HR people in the world. We're opening nominations formally on the 1st of August. We have another independent judging panel which will be sitting over Christmas that's going to announce the first places on the HR 100 in January. And everyone in the hall, anyone who's an HR innovator in the world can nominate themselves or be nominated. And we're really excited because today, in this room, we have the first 10 nominees who we brought here as guests of the Benefits Excellence Awards, and they're sitting amongst you in different tables. They only just, we brought them here definitely under false pretenses. They didn't know why they were coming, and we only taught them while they were here a quarter to seven. But I know there's more than 10 nominees in this room because to get to the Benefits Excellence Awards and to be a final and to be part of this world, there's a very good chance that you are also a really amazing, strong innovator, someone who has the courage to want a different, a better, a better tomorrow for your organization. So I'm really excited to see how many nominations and applications we get from this group, from this group over the coming weeks. And I hope you'll all give it your interest and support. And I think the thing about innovation that I know more than anything is innovation, innovation does really rely on three things. It relies on someone having the courage to want something better than they have today, and the courage to take ownership of that, and to say that they're gonna make that happen, whatever the risks are. It requires an acceptance that it might go wrong and it might fail, and the thought that that's okay. 
Yeah, if it goes wrong and it fails, we'll do something else, but we'll have learned loads from it. And it requires comfort with change because innovation requires change. And in a business like ours, where we're innovating constantly, we understand that more than anybody. When you think you might change, you've sometimes got to say goodbye to some things that you have and that have worked in the past to make room for the new, otherwise you haven't got room for anything new. So we're going to say a little goodbye to something tonight, actually, because at this event a year ago, we introduced everyone to a really wonderful little video called uh, Human in HR, which became a theme of ours throughout the entire year. It went down really well, people borrowed it and played it at board meetings and all sorts of things, and we ran it at every single one of our events over the last year. But we've decided that today on its first anniversary, we're going to retire it. We're going to retire it because we want to make room for something new that we'll be bringing out our big product launch event at the end of October. So, on that note, I'm going to show you for the very, very last time at a big event, but like all good programs, it would live on for longer on YouTube, Human in HR. Thank you very much.